I'm Dr. Keith Giaquinto, and today I want to talk about chiropractic. What is chiropractic? So if you are out there and you have no idea what chiropractic is about, or if you have an idea of what you think chiropractic is about, we're going to do a deeper dive and help to broaden your understanding of what chiropractic is about so you can fully utilize it to your advantage in being as healthy as possible. So what I'm going to go over today is we're going to talk about some basic concepts about health and the body. We're going to talk about chiropractic principles, what subluxations are and how they destroy your health, early warning signs or symptoms of when the body is stressed out and subluxated, and then ultimately talking about the power of chiropractic. What does the adjustment actually do in the body? So let's begin. So some basic concepts of health. Both health and disease are simply an expression of the body. So health in its most basic form is that when your brain body communication is disrupted because you've got spinal subluxations and your organs and tissues are malnourished, then the body can easily express a disease process and give you symptoms. It's what it's designed to do. On the opposite side, when your brain body communication is clear from proper spinal alignment and your organs and tissues are well fed, guess what? The body can easily express health because both health and disease need to be built and they are built with our habits. So if you have unhealthy habits, if you have a crappy diet and are eating a lot of processed foods, right, a lot of sugar, uh, soda, alcohol, you know, things like that, very little fruits or vegetables, then how can you exp expect your body to express health? It's only a matter of time before you get hit with the disease process. On the flip side of that, if you eat very clean, if you exercise regularly, if you get enough sleep, if you hydrate the, you know, drink plenty of water, right, you get regular chiropractic care then the body can very easily express health because it is being supported. So why go to a chiropractor? When people think about chiropractic, what is the first couple things that they think of? Well, it is about neck pain and it's about back pain. Well, how do chiropractors address those types of issues? Well, through adjusting the spine. And chiropractic is very, very good at neck and back pain. But going to a chiropractor for neck or back pain is very limiting on what chiropractic can actually do for your overall health. Going to a chiropractor for neck or back pain is like getting a brand new smartphone and only using it for the calculator. Now, you can use the calculator app and get very good results with it, but it's not what the smartphone was built for. Same thing with chiropractic. Neck and back pain is not simply what chiropractic was no, is built was discovered for. Okay, chiropractic is about functioning. It is not about how you feel. It is about how the body is functioning. Because you can feel fine and still have cancer developing in your body. You can feel fine and have heart disease or diabetes. Okay, you can't feel osteoporosis. So health has nothing to do with how you're feeling. It has everything to do with how the body is functioning. And I'll tie that into a slide that I'm talking about a little bit later when we talk about the nerves. Chiropractic is about brain health. Your brain has to monitor, direct, and regulate and coordinate every single thing in the body. So, and the spine has a very intimate connection with the brain. So if your spine's out of alignment and your brain's not functioning properly, this can weaken your body on a whole. It's about balancing out the nervous system, organ balance, hormonal balance, and strong immunity. This is what chiropractic is about. It's just our approach is through adjusting the spine. Chiropractic can be summed up in one phrase, and that is the power that made the body heals the body. It really is that simple. And how it does that is that innate intelligence is expressed through the nervous system. And I'll talk in, about innate intelligence in a couple of slides here. Subluxations disrupt the brain-body communication, which then interferes with the expression of innate. 
So chiropractors correct subluxations to restore brain-body communication, which then allows innate intelligence to be fully expressed. Chiropractic doesn't add or remove anything to or from the body. So the best doctor resides inside every, every single cell in the entire body, and this is innate intelligence. Innate is what does all of the healing. I simply do not heal my patients when they come to see me. I help them to unlock the potential inside of them and allow the doctor within to do all of the healing. So chiropractic is a healing art system that utilizes the recuperative powers of the body being innate. Chiropractic as approach is through spinal adjustments, but not just adjusting the spine. We can adjust any joint in the body. It can be in the extremities, right? Your shoulders, elbows, wrist, hip, knee, ankles. Any joint in the body has the ability to become subluxated. So we just find those subluxations and apply specific adjustments in them to restore normal motion and allow the body to do what it was designed to do. We can also do other therapies and talk specifically about posture because when we give patients postural exercises to do when you help to strengthen your posture and the spinal muscles, your body is able to hold the proper alignment longer and you can function at a higher level. We can also offer advice and counseling on diet and lifestyle issues, but also stress management techniques to help minimize that stress on your body. So B.J. Palmer, who is the son of D.D. Palmer, and D.D. Palmer was the the guy that discovered chiropractic back in 1895. His son, BJ, took what DD started and then developed it and took it further. BJ states that with innate, we are alive. Without innate, we are dead. With only a portion of innate, we are sick. And with all of innate at work, we are well. So what is innate intelligence? Innate intelligence is this inherent or this inborn wisdom that is present in all living matter. It is present in, all, in every cell in the human body. It's present in animals. It's present in cells. Anything that's alive has innate intelligence. So what is it? It is this force that is responsible for the organization, the maintenance, and the healing of the body. It is a constructive, adaptive power for survival. It is expressed through the nervous system. And it is present in every single cell. So imagine our natural state, the human body's natural state is health and well-being. So if this is true, then why is there so much sickness out there? Because People abuse our bodies to a point where it can no longer compensate and it has to break down, become dysfunctional and express disease. So, and the other reason is that we're simply not taught how the body works. We're not taught how to take care of ourselves, which is the main reason for this video is to help further educate you so that you can fully own your health and deepen your understanding about your body, how it works and how chiropractic you can use to your advantage to get the best things out of your life. So imagine a wisdom that is so great that it knows more in one second than we could ever consciously know in an entire lifetime. This is what innate intelligence is. Let me give you a couple examples. So imagine when a, at the moment of conception, when the egg and the sperm meet and forms one cell, in nine months, we have 50 trillion cells that are organized in a specific manner with different uh, cell structures and tissues and systems in the body that we then call a baby. How is this possible without conscious thought? This is the work of innate. Another example is, is that we get a cut on our arm. You know, we get a... a a cut and it starts to bleed so then after it bleeds then it starts to form a scab and it scabs over and then new skin cells form underneath to then heal it completely so when we get cut do we have to consciously think all right all right now i know i see the bleeding so 
bleed some more, and I feel the pain. All right, now, blood cells start to scab over and start to clot. All right, now, once that's done, then skin cells start to form. No, we don't have to think about that. It just happens automatically. This is the work of innate. It's an automatic subconscious thing that just runs the body. Homeostasis. What is homeostasis? It is the body's ability to maintain the consistency of its internal environment despite changes in its surroundings. There are 11 organ systems that run homeostasis and all 11 organ systems are totally dependent upon nutrition and proper communication with the brain. So when you've got subluxations, it can interfere with the, the uh, organs to be able to function properly. So let's think of homeostasis and these 11 organ systems as an orchestra. You've got all your different sex and sections of the orchestra. You know, you got your percussions, you got your violins, you've got your flutes, the saxophones, the clarinets, right? All these different sections need to work together. They have to play at the same tempo, the same loudness, and in sync in order for them to create music, which is then enjoyable to us and to our ears. But what were to happen if the percussions were playing too fast? What if the clarinets were playing too loud? What if the flutes were playing too slow, right? What if the uh, violins were playing too soft? Would we be able to then hear this, listen to this orchestra and think of it as music? No, it would sound awful. What's the exact same thing that happens in the body? When you've got certain organ systems running too fast or certain organ systems running too slow because of the amount of stress on our body and our diet and subluxations in the spine, then when homeostasis is out of balance, it can easily express symptoms and or health problems. It's the only way that it has to communicate with us that it's out of balance. And it is simply an expression. One thing about homeostasis is that it forces relationships without exception. What do I mean by this? Well, have you ever gotten sick? And when you got sick, you lost your appetite. Ever wonder why that happens? Yeah, probably not. So when you become sick, you have a, a bug or a virus or something that gets in you that gets infected and it ramps up and it's crawling on your immune system, it's going to war, right? So it takes your body an enormous amount of energy to run the digestion system. It is also extremely metabolically expensive to run the immune system. So if you are fighting something, your brain is like, hey, uh, we don't need to worry about digesting food right now because we got a war going on. So all this energy and uh, resources devoting to the digestion system, we're going to conserve that and channel it into the immune system to fight whatever is going on with you. And then once your immune system gets a handle on it, once it manages it and contains it and is winning the war, then guess what? Then your appetite comes back. This is what I mean by forcing relationships without exception. Another example is, is, let's say you're gonna go out for a run. Well, what needs to happen when you start to run? Well, your heart needs to pound faster to pump the blood through all the extremities and everything. You gotta breathe heavier to get more oxygen in so that you can continue to run. Well, what else happens? Your brain's like, well, Let's shun all the blood away from the digestion system because we don't need to digest food right now because we're going for a run. And let's pump it into the extremities. Let's pump it into the lungs and the brain so that you can think and move. And that's what I'm talking about when we're forcing relationships without exception. So disruption of the balance in homeostasis forces the body to express symptoms and or health challenges. So you've got those 11 different organ systems. If they are out of balance due to stress, if they are out of balance because they are malnourished, because your diet is off, or you've got subluxations in your spine, then it's going to make that terrible noise as an orchestra and just give you symptoms. So subluxation, what is a subluxation? We break down the word, sub means less than, 
luxation means dislocation. So it's less than a dislocation. The American Chiropractic Association has this definition of what a subluxation is, which is a complex of functional and or structural and or pathological articular changes that compromise neural integrity and may influence organ system function and general health. Now, that is a mouthful. What the heck does that even mean? So functional, we're looking at, you know, movement. We're looking at uh, organ function. We're structural. We're looking at, you know, just the joints and the, the bones themselves not moving properly. And when you have these issues going on, they can actually cause articular changes in the, the joint that can then cause degeneration. And when you have these functional, structural, or pathological changes, this compromises the neural integrity of the spine and the nervous system and the brain, and then negatively influences organ function and the overall body. I like the International Chiropractic Association's uh, definition of what a subluxation is. Simply, a subluxation is a stress response. So think of it this way. Your spine and your nervous system is like a circuit breaker. And when there's too much of a surge going into that, that uh, channel, then you blow a fuse and the circuit breaker flips. Well, it's the exact same thing in your spine. When you've got too much stress on your system, whether it's mechanical in nature, whether it is emotional in nature, or is nutritional in nature, when your system is overloaded, it's gonna cause a subluxation in the spine, which is like blowing a fuse. So then how do you turn that breaker back on, right? Well, you gotta to go to the circuit breaker or circuit box and just re flip it to uh, reset the whole system. That's what going to a chiropractor is like. Due to too much stress in your system and subluxations, the chiropractor adjusts the spine, which then resets the nervous system and everything can then start over. So every nerve, every spinal level, right, we've got 24 vertebrae from our head to our pelvis. And at each level, every single nerve that comes out from the spine goes to three separate things. So if we were to take a cross section of one of the nerves, this is what we're looking at. We have a motor component, which is your brain talking to your muscles. We have the autonomic component, which is your brain talking to your organs. And then we have a sensory component, which is, deals with posture, temperature, and then pain. So what I want you to understand here is that this sensory component makes up for less than 10% uh, of all nerve transmissions. What does that mean? Well, 90% of the time, you're gonna have a loss of function before you feel spinal pain. So then what does that look like? Well, you can have weakness in your muscles, you can have spasm, you can have muscle tightness, you can have organ-related issues such as sinus and allergy issues, low energy, digestion problems, breathing problems, because pain only shows up in the most acute or extreme situation. But nine times out of 10, you're gonna have a loss of function that you may not be able to feel in your spine. And this is what I was talking about. Health is not about how you're feeling. It's about how you're functioning. And when you've got subluxations in your spine that can irritate the nerves, then it can weaken that one spinal level and cause dysfunction. Because every nerve that comes out from the spine goes to different body, uh, areas of the body. And if you've got a subluxation at a particular level, these are some of the symptoms that you can get if you've got a subluxation at that particular level. When I show my patients this chart when they come in, most of them are, have never seen anything like this and didn't understand or realize that your spine is kind of the gateway to every single thing in the body. So can you see if, that if you've got you know, 12 or 15 subluxations out of the 24 spinal levels, can you see how it will weaken the body and cause dysfunction and give you health issues as a result of that? Yeah, that's how it happens. So 
What are some early symptoms or warning signs that you have subluxations or that your body is becoming weak? Well, when we are under stress, there are two systems that have to combat stress in the body. The first one is the sympathetic nervous system, which is your fight or flight response. The second is a hormonal response, which deals with the adrenal glands. So when you become sympathetically dominant and your adrenals become exhausted or fatigued, then you're gonna get a certain set of symptoms that will show up in the body. So sympathetic dominance, where do we feel sympathetic dominance in the body? We feel it right here at the base of our skull, in our neck. So when you get that tightness or stiffness or that pain in that neck, you have a hard time rotating it or moving it around, that's because you've got subluxations in your spine and you can be sympathetically dominant. What else can happen? Well, you can have insomnia issues where you have a hard time falling asleep. You lay down at night and it takes you about an hour or two to fall asleep and for your nervous system to unwind enough so that you can fall asleep. You get headaches, whether it's tension headaches, you know, cluster headaches, migraines, doesn't matter. Headaches are an, a sign of subluxations. Sinus congestion, allergy issues, and then weak digestion, whether it's bloating, gas, heartburn, constipation, diarrhea. These are all war early warning signs that you are sympathetically dominant and you've got subluxations in your spine and your nervous system and brain are not in balance. Secondly, the adrenals, right? These are little walnut-sized glands that sit on top of the kidneys that are responsible for the hormonal response to stress. So when the adrenal glands become exhausted or fatigued, then you can have blood sugar issues, right? Your blood sugar's up, your blood sugar's down. You can become lightheaded when meals are missed. You can have be more moody, have mood swings, right? Anxiety, depression issues, and that's related to the blood sugar. Insomnia is a different kind of insomnia where you may be able to fall asleep fine, but then you wake up at one, two o'clock in the morning and you're wide awake, your body's like, all right, uh, I'm just gonna sit here and toss and turn for an hour or two. These are signs of adrenal exhaustion. Just general fatigue in general, hormonal balance, right? This is where people can have thyroid issues or sex organ issues, right? Where a lot of women have you know, PMS type stuff they can develop because of this hormonal imbalance. And you'll know this because you'll need to start craving sugar and or salt. Salty things are like, you know, chips or popcorn, right? Because the salt are what the adrenal glands need to, to be supported nutritionally for them to function. So if you're running your adrenal glands too fast because you're, the amount of stress that you're under, they're gonna require more nutrition to combat that stress. And then also too, the overuse of caffeine, a stimulant, because you just don't have the energy to make it through the day to where you're hitting, you know, drinking coffee all day long to kind of keep that energy up. So what organ controls everything in the body? The brain, right? The brain is what controls everything. So how does the brain work? Well, your brain has to monitor, it regulates, it coordinates, and it directs every cell, tissue, and organ in the entire body. But in order for it to do that, it has to receive the correct input from the body. Because if it's not receiving the right in input from the body, then it can't send the appropriate response down and maintain homeostasis. So it has to receive the correct input from the body. Then the, bo the brain has to process, it needs to adapt to what it's being told, and then have the appropriate response that it sends down through the spine and out to the body. And the spine has an intimate connection with the brain. Now, when we're under stress, stress creates subluxations in the spine. Subluxations interfere with the brain-body communication and causes abnormal function in your nervous system. The brain can't adapt and respond appropriately, so then homeostasis then gets out of balance, which then, how does the body let you know? It has to give you symptoms and or a health challenge. So this is, in its most basic form, how 
the nervous system and the brain works and how subluxations and stress can interfere with normal function. So what does a chiropractic adjustment do, right? Here's so it's just some things that it does, but I want to explain this to you in a way that you guys can really understand. The most important part of this chiropractic adjustment is the neurological input to the brain. That is the most important part. Now, an analogy of how to think about this is, let's say you are the brain and you are a bartender and you are the only bartender and your bar is full. There are tons of people in there, it's very loud. You can't hear everything. And if you're sitting next to somebody and you have to shout in order to carry on a conversation, it's very hard to hear the person because of all the noise that's going on around you. Well, if you're the bartender and you gotta get drink orders from 10 or 15 different people, all you hear is all of this noise coming at you. It's hard to decipher what they're saying, what's the communication, what drink did they order, how many drinks, blah, 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 blah. So that's what it's like in the brain when you have subluxations in the spine. Because the, when you've got subluxation, your brain is being bombarded with a lot of misinformation. So what does the adjustment do? Let's say, the bartender now pulls out a gun and it shoots the gun off in the bar. It's like, boom. Everything becomes quiet. Conversation starts over. But people can start talking at a normal level. They don't have to yell. Now the bartender can hear exactly what the drink orders are, how many orders drinks they're getting, so that then they can then make them and serve them out. That is what a chiropractic adjustment does in the body. And there are 24 vertebrae and many levels that can be subluxated that can weaken the body as a whole. Because at the bottom of this chart here, subluxations are caused by physical traumas, chemical toxins, and emotional thoughts. This was Dee Dee Palmer's original theory behind this and it still holds true to this day. Traumas, thoughts, and toxins. And when your body is subluxated, subluxations rob the body's ability to focus, to organize, to think, and to heal, which is simply weakening the expression of innate. I think BJ Palmer really said it best, is that while other professions are concerned with changing the environment, to suit and weaken suit the weakened body, chiropractors are concerned with strengthening the body to suit the environment. What's the example here? Well, let's say somebody with seasonal allergies. Seasonal allergies, someone who suffers with seasonal, seasonal allergies are acutely aware of the pollen count outside, right? They have air filters in their home because their sinuses are overly sensitive to the environment. So they have to manage what they do as a person and try to treat the environment so that they don't react to the environment. Well, the chiropractic approach is let's strengthen the body and get the sinuses back online and, and functioning better so that it doesn't matter what the pollen count is. Your body will then be able to handle it and you will become less symptomatic. That is the approach. Because medicine is the study of disease and what causes man to die. Chiropractic is the study of health and what causes man to live. So as you can see, these are two afflict, uh, opposing thoughts and paradigms and a way of approaching health and the body. Now, the medicine, uh, medicine is, where medicine thrives is in the acute or that crisis situation, right? You get into a car accident and you got a laceration on your forehead, right? You don't need to go to a chiropractor to get adjusted. You need to go to the hospital and get stitched up. That's what they're there for. And they're really, really good at that. They're also good at infectious disease. And they're also really good at disease management. But when it comes to restoring normal function, when it comes to chronic disease, they really don't understand how the body works or 
what they need to do to heal it. Because medicine does not heal the body. Medicine only puts a Band-Aid over the symptoms and it doesn't restore normal function. Taking a medication to artificially inflate some numbers and thinking that you are healthy is like taking out a loan and thinking that you are rich. It just doesn't happen that way. Chiropractic is all about restoring normal function by adjusting the spine so that your brain can then function properly, your organ systems can come back online and get reset, your horm hormones are in balance, your immunity is strong, so that it doesn't matter which environment you go into, your body is strong enough to handle it and to adapt appropriately without symptoms. Chiropractic. The spine is a neurospinal organ, right? It has an intimate connection with the brain and the nervous system. Chiropractic is all about brain health. It is about balancing out the nervous system, organ balance, immunity balance, hormonal balance, because every organ is connected to the one under your hat. To kind of review this, what people think chiropractic is, oh, chiropractic is about neck pain, back pain, headaches, pain relief. You go in, you get cracked, and you're healed, right? Well, that's a very limiting and an old way of thinking. But what chiropractic is actually it's about improving the function of your body, restoring balance, reconnecting mind and body. It improves performance. Now, this is why a lot of professional sports teams have chiropractors on staff, because athletes know their body very, very well. And getting regular chiropractic care gives them that competitive edge in athletic performance. Chiropractic has a huge presence at the Olympics because athletes know that it helps them with the performance. It improves neuroregulation. It strengthens the immunity, and it's all about patient education. That's probably the biggest thing that I deal with in my practice is simply educating patients on how their body works and what they can do at home to help to keep their body strong. So I did a recent survey of my patients and why they continue to get adjusted and what is their benefit of it? And this is what they said. The majority of them said that they have no pain, they have more flexibility, they've got more energy, they have more body awareness, they feel better overall, better digestion, and better sleep. So if you want any of these benefits, go visit your chiropractor and go get start getting adjusted. So just to kind of review, right? We went over some basics about health being on different uh, same spectrum, just opposite ends and how the body works. We talked about chiropractic principles, what subluxations are and how they destroy your health, some early symptoms and warning signs and the power of chiropractic and what the adjustment is all about. Now, unlocking your fullest potential. So what if, what if you could think about health in a different way? What if you engaged in your life in a different way when it came to your health and you made your health a priority? Because now you understand what innate intelligence is. What if you fully believed and trusted in it that to do the right thing because it's there and it works for you? You just got to believe in it. What if you were able to support homeostasis by cleaning up your diet? right? Developing healthy lifestyle habits, exercising, drinking enough water, getting enough sleep, getting regular chiropractic care to help support and strengthen your body. Regular chiropractic care to help balance out the brain and the nervous system and homeostasis to keep you strong. So that it doesn't matter what environment you go in, you'll be able to handle it with ease. Chiropractic helps to strengthen the body and it helps to build your health. And what if we thought about going to a chiropractor first? What if at the first sign of a sniffle that you went in and you got adjusted? What if whatever happened to you outside of blood gushing from you or something that's broken that needs an immediate, immediate medical care, what if you went to a chiropractor first and got adjusted and learned to strengthen the body? How would that be different?
How would your life be different if you actually made your health a priority, supported it with healthy habits, and got consistent care? Do you not think that your life would be better because you'll be so much stronger as a result of it? I do. So I want to thank you all for watching. I hope this kind of helps dive into and helps to uh, deepen your understanding of it and what you can do for yourself in helping to own your health. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel so you can get more videos and content like this. But also too, i like to hear from you. Leave a comment down below. What did you learn about chiropractic by watching this video that you didn't know before? Or what was one thing that I helped to clarify or connect the dots on for you? List it down below. I'd like to hear from you. If you have other people that you care about that are suffering with a health challenge that don't know anything about chiropractic, share this video with them. Give them the benefit that you got from watching this and helping to educate you so that they can maybe help have chiropractic help them in their health situation. Because a lot of people don't think outside of neck pain and back pain that chiropractic is just not a viable option for them. Well, they're so wrong. So share this video with your loved ones and people that need to hear this message. And help me to make chiropractic the number one healthcare choice for you and your family. So I'm Dr. Key, thank you for watching. And just remember that it's your body, it's your health, it's your choice own it. If you need help, just ask.